always interesting to know the story behind the utilities you use. It is for me anyway. Pengal Something you should also note for those for familiar with bash globbing is that regex uses some of the same operators that you use in bash globbing. However, they work differently. But they're similar enough that they can cause confusion. And it really messes with my head at first. <laughs> it, 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 you got to understand that even though the symbol's the same, it's not going to work like it does in bash globbing. It's going to work differently. But similar. There are four different regex engines. The one invoked by just using grep by itself. The basic regex engine invoked with a dash uppercase G. The extended regex engine invoked with a dash uppercase O, oh, uppercase G, and then the extended is the uppercase E. Hey, give. If you're plugging into this power strip, it'll give you more length on your power grid. Oh, cool. And then the, uh, there's the uppercase P, which is for the Perl reg regular expression engine in uh, GREP. The uppercase E includes both of the expression, the engines that are lesser than it, and then adds functionality. Okay, so this presentation is going to focus on the upper, the extended, the uppercase E. We're not going to discuss the dash P for the Perl because the syntax for the Perl engine is different and the regular expressions give additional functionality. However, here's what the man page says about it. This is highly experimental and grep dash uppercase P may warn of unimplemented features. So we're only going to discuss the extended regular X, regular expression. And if you don't want any regular expression apl applied to your string, if you just want to search exactly for your string the way it is, you would use uppercase F, which says don't apply any re regex. Okay, there's a couple of ways to use it. Literal, this is uh, any character used in the search. For example, to find CH, the CH is a literal string. It's literally what you're looking for. Then there's a meta character, okay? Such as if we were going to search for uh, BO plus. The plus means O uh, one or more times. So it would match BOO. B O O O, but it won't match just B O. Do you understand that? Two or more times. No. One more. One more than no. You're right. It's so uh, one, so it will match B O, but the O has to be there. And then we have target which is what we're searching, and it's usually a file. So that grep is going to search for CH at the beginning of a line, and then any character any number of times until it reaches the number nine, the last number nine in the string. So it's not going to stop the first time it hits a number nine. It's going to stop the last time it sees a number nine. And then we have the escape character. The escape character is the backslash. And it's used to make a meta character like the regular literal character. So in the expression there, it would search for jr dot. And the dot would be a literal dot. It wouldn't be the meta character dot which means match any character. A simple search like grep smith just searches for the regex in that exact order. So it's going to find the word smith anywhere it is in your target. On the following slides and the expressions that are part of the definitions, RE stands for regular expression.
Bracket expressions allow us to define lists of things to test for. This will match CH followed by any vowel before an R. The dash inside the brackets represents a range unless it's the first or last inside the brackets. And the dash has no special meaning at all outside of brackets. Also, the dot and the question mark, which are meta characters also, have no meaning inside the brackets. Their special meaning only happens if it's outside the brackets. Inside the brackets. Yeah, I'm going to talk, talk about that in a second. <clears throat> Both of these searches, the first dash makes the numbers a range. The first search will match any 5, 6, or 7, followed by a dash. And it produces 24 results from our file. However, the second search will match any 5, 6, or 7, or dash. And it produces 95 results from the same file. So where you put things in your string matters. and the caret symbol. It has two meanings. Inside the brackets, it means negation. It means find everything except what my expression inside the brackets is. Okay? Outside, it means start of the, the line in gray. So what our expression there, it will find everything except 0 through 8 with a dash afterwards. Iterators. First one we're going to talk about is the dot. Now I know the dot's not really an iterator, but I like to think of it as the infinite iterator, iterator as it matches everything until you stop it or it reaches the EOF. Okay, so if you just search for dot, it's going to match your whole file, which is probably not what you want to do. Then the, we have the question mark, which matches the prior character zero or one time. In essence, it makes the preceding character optional. So this would match. B O O or B O because it makes that second O optional. And then we have the uh, star, which matches the prior character, occurs zero or more times. So in our example, it would match I, I, I. I, 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 10,000 eyes, I, or it would match a single I, because we have a, a trailing I. So the first I becomes optional, or as many I's as there are. Then we have the plus, which matches the prior character one or more times. So as in our example there, that would match Ken with one end, Ken with two ends, Ken with three ends, Ken with four ends, and so on. All of these iterators are very generic. So let's look at a way to make them a little more specific. If we use the curly braces, it matches the preceding character or character range exactly n times. So in our examples there, the first one is going to match if there is a bang B <coughs> exactly three times followed by another bang. Okay? And then the third one would match any phone number in our file that starts with 248 because it's 
character ranges. Zero through nine, exactly three times. And zero through nine, exactly four times. That's the phone number. And then n comma matches the preceding character occurs at least n times or more. So our first search there is going to match bang v at least three times, but as many v's as, as there are in the, each line of the file up until it gets to a bang, another bang, and then it's going to stop. <laughs> And then the second one, 7RQ, matches three contiguous threes, R's, or Q's. Not, it doesn't match 7RQ three times. It matches where there are three sevens, three R's, or three Q's at least three times in a row. Do you understand that? If anybody has any questions, just shout them out. And then the last one, we're gonna, it gives it a specific range, okay? It matches when the preceding character occurs at least n times, but not more than m times, okay? So our first regular expression is gonna match eight if it occurs at least two times, but not more than five times, followed by a bang. That's just the preceding character, though. So it would be bang, eight, eight, bang. Not right. Bang eight, bang eight. Correct. Okay. So it would be bang, and then two or more eights up to five, and then a bang. It would match all of that. And then two gn. It's like the one above it, where it's it's going to match at least two twos, up to five twos, and two g uppercase g's, up to five uppercase g's and then end the same thing. Any questions? On uh, your first example there, uh, I don't see a whole lot of point out of it being an example. Why not just put three Bs in between your bangs? Because it's an example. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're going to talk about anchors. The caret, when it's outside the braces, matches at the beginning of a line. Does it have to be the first character? Uh, well, if it's not the first character... It's never going to match it. Right. <laughs> because it means the beginning of a line. So it has to be the first character. Because what that means is... Beginning of the line, and then the characters that you put after it have to come right at the very beginning of the line. Right. So if you have characters, the carrot and characters, it's not going to match anything ever. Is it still, does it become literal after the first? No. So you'd still have to escape if you wanted to match a carrot. Correct. Anywhere. Yeah, okay. Like our example here, that search will match any open open uh, quotes and then uppercase C, lowercase h. So it'll match cherry or the or sherry or things like that. It's always in the beginning of the line. Right. Mm -hmm. And then with the dollar sign, that means the end of the line. Okay? So this search will match any line in our file that ends with g.com. And you'll notice that we escaped the dot in the search pattern. That is because the dot is, the, is a meta character that we talked about before, and we want to match a literal dot. In this instance, it would return the same results because the file we're searching all, every single line ends in .com, okay? So in this file, it wouldn't matter whether we escaped it or not. But if, if you were using it in another file and you didn't escape it, you may get unexpected results. And unexpected results is a way of saying you're going to get shit back you don't want.
Are those double quotes or two consecutive single quotes? For this example, it's it's a double quote. But in actuality, it wouldn't matter because if you were searching for two consecutive single quotes, that's what you would use. That's where you got it contained within single quotes. Ah, so that'd be a problem. Right. No, it would not. No because 99.9% .9 of the time, you always want to encapsulate your grep search inside single quotes. Mm -hmm. Do we know why? <clears throat> you don't want the shell interpreter. Exactly. We don't want to get accidental expansion from the shell. But don't you have to put a backslash in front of a single quote to let it know that that's not the end, the termination of your search string? If you're searching for single quotes, ah. that's what that's what You may, yes. I don't know. I've never searched for single quotes. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> So yes, yes, you may have to escape the single quote then. You can't escape the single quote. You can't? No. The rule is when you use a single quote, the shell is stopping completely out of the way. So it's not going to do that. Otherwise, your backslash in that example would be eaten by the shell to escape the dot. The shell stays 100% out of the way and interpreting the stone that starts and ends with it. With the quote, with the right, but even with the single quotes, it sees your backslash and knows that you mean for the next thing after the backslash to be interpreted literally. You can't escape a single quote in a single quoted string. The shell won't allow you to do that. Then how do you search for it? Comes an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> My guess tell. is that you have to not put it in or change the quotes. And you have to manually escape anything that the shell is going to expand. I'm going to, I'm going to experiment with that later today. I've had it come up. It's not fun. I just changed the designated escape character, but there's got to be a better way. <clears throat> you can escape the escape character, yes? Yes. If you want to search for, it, for a backslash, you have to escape the backslash. Okay. What alternation means is a logical or, and the pipe in, in our regex in grep is a logical or. So our grep statement there is going to find the, the strings word and the strings white. And it's going to print out every matching, every line with the, a matching, with a match in it. So it's going to print out every line that has the word word or the word white in it. To go back a second. Sorry. Another way you could do it that I just found was you could use the hexadecimal representation of a single quote. Mm, yes. That would work. You could also use double quotes. You said 99% of the time you don't. But right. But you if you know the double quotes searching. are going to harm your search by expanding something. The shell will still intercept a number of meta characters in right. double quotes. So, the next is the parentheses or grouping. They're used to group parts of our string of our expression together, and it's officially called a sub expression, and they may, may be nested to any depth. It's quite often used with the pipe, as in our example here. So, this will match either Anna with two N's or Anna with one N. use as many pipes in the string as you like. Yes. Yeah, at the at the end the last one I use is a will show you like a real word word a real word real world. world usage that I use at work a lot. And it has multiple pipes and multiple groupings. Next we have abbreviations. There are two types of abbreviations, positional and character class. And these were uh, put in to simplify your regex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Use these with caution. Remember, they will be greedy matching as much as possible. So will everything else. Yes.
So, we have the positional of a escaped less than sign, which matches at the beginning of a word, and an escaped greater than sign, which matches at the end of the word. An escaped lowercase b matches any word boundary. That's any time that you hit white space. If you have character, 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 then white space, that, and then you have character, 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 that white space, that will give you a word boundary at the end of the first one and the beginning of the second. They're both word boundaries. So, for example, if someone, like an older person, puts the two blanks at the end of a sentence and the younger person says, that's not correct, you could just run a little script that take all the twos and change them to one. Is that you could, but you wouldn't use grep, probably. You'd use something like said. Okay. And the uppercase B matches not at a word boundary. Meaning, if I'm looking for a, a, the letters like B, E, C, and I want to make sure that they're not either at the end or the beginning of a word, I would use them, use them with that. I would put them inside two uppercase slash Bs. Then it would only find them if they were inside other words. On his example, with using said, you use the same regex. Yes. So how does it know that's just not a um, negated uh, capital B? Why would you negate a B? Uh, well, I'm, I don't know, but... You wouldn't. Uh, okay. So it knows because it's a B that it's not negated. Right. Okay. Together they mean right. a, a word boundary. And then we have character classes. So we have the uh, backslash lowercase w, which matches any character in these ranges, 0 through 9, uppercase A to Z, lowercase A to Z, and the underscore is what will be matched by that. And then the uppercase W is going to match the opposite. It'll match anything that's not 0 to 9, uppercase A to Z, lowercase A to Z, or an underscore. And then the slash S will match any white space character, such as space or tab and uppercase S will match any not white space character, such as space or tab. Now we have the POSIX character classes, okay? And POSIX 1003.2, section 2.8.3.2, Subsection 6 defines a set of character classes that denotes certain common ranges. They tend to look very ugly, but have the advantage that also take into account the, the local. Whatever local is set to on the machine, these will take that into account. How does Unicode affect this? If we have a looking at it. Text style with Unicode characters that right. are going to do something monkey? Mm, it's not going to recognize them for the Unicode character they're supposed to be. Do you know what I mean? I think so. It's doing by like comparisons or something. Well, yeah. in, let's put it this way Grep is not Unicode aware. It's not aware right. of any encoding structure. So it's it's, it's only going to find the individual character, the actual I mean, character. Give the, Grep doesn't Never. understand UTF-8 or any other encoding. It assumes everything is, quote, ASCII. Right. And that it works in ASCII. Now we're getting into where everything I'm dealing with is the UTF-8 or, or, yeah, other things. So. Right. And Grep only works, it sees all the characters as ASCII. So your Unicode string, that means, like you could have a Unicode string, that means the double quote. It's not going to match that as a double quote. It's going to match that as the individual characters in the Unicode string. But it shouldn't malfunction then, as far as... What would malfunction? Or it shouldn't misread it as a control or anything. It just won't match it. Yeah. It can misread it as a control that depends on what glyph you hit. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and encode UTF-8, and UTF-8 can land Control character. Yes, which we'll get to matching control characters later. We're we talking about. And 
and they always need to be placed inside of other brackets. So in essence, it's always going to be, even though it's single bracket, colon, what you want to match, colon, close brackets, it has to be placed inside brackets. So in essence, it always becomes double bracket, colon, what you're matching, colon, double bracket. However, what you can do inside those brackets are add other things that you want to match. Line two. I was wondering about that. What's the typo? The closed bracket. Oh, you're right. It's a curly brace. It's supposed to be a square bracket like the rest of them. <laughs> I didn't see that because of my glasses. Again. And you got real bad glare on the screen, too. So, our first one there will match any zero to nine digit. The second one matches any possible hexadecimal character. So, it's going to match 0 to 9 and A to F, either uppercase or lowercase. So, it's going to match dead beef. <laughs> yes. It's arguably text. Yes. Interesting. Because <laughs> it is possibly a hexadecimal number. Yeah. <laughs> and then, AL num stands for alphanumeric. Okay, so that will, that will match all 0 through 9 or A to Z uppercase and A to Z lowercase and I have another typo there. I forgot the A. <laughs> and then alpha matches any alpha character so it's going to match uppercase A to Z or lowercase A to Z. And then blank which will match space and tab characters. Punctuation which will match the punctuation symbols such as dot, comma, Double quote, single quote, question mark, bang, semicolon, colon, pound sign, dollar sign, etc. And then we have print will match any printable character. Space matches any white space character, such as uh, space, tab, new line, carriage return. And graph matches any non white space character, like space, tab, new line, carriage return. Does it consider the vertical tab character? Uh, it doesn't match that either. I, for space, I didn't list out the 15, you know, blank space characters. But yes, it will, it will match that. It includes that in the white space. And then upper matches all your alpha case, alpha letter, out, all of the alpha characters in uppercase. Lower matches all the alpha characters in lowercase. And CNTRL, control, matches control characters such as tab, carriage return, escape, and control itself. Go ahead. Now, by itself, this is just one instance of this. Is this correct? No, it will match oh, as many okay. as it sees. Okay. That's with, with grip. If you say, I want to find A, it's going to match every A in okay, what you're searching. Yeah, right. So, what is a control character? A control character like tab, carriage return, escape, or control. Well, that's what I mean. The last one you said control. Is it, isn't control always used with uh, another? Maybe. You control but you may have a control character. My dot, you'll see. Okay, this simple loop that is going to grab out the hits of a particular patchy access log. It's going to do each hour individually and then do some processing to give us the top five IPs that hit during the hour and the top five URIs that were hit during that hour. And that's what, that's what that is doing with that graph. Because we're matching October 21st, 2014, and then we're whatever hour is in our loop, okay? That's why we have double quotes, so that that expands. Okay? And then, we're alternating, so now that we've matched everything from the 21st, because our logs don't rotate right at midnight, my access logs rotate between 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning. So we're going to have dates from two days in, in our access log. So then we need to do an OR 22nd October, and then every hour also. Okay, do you understand how that's going to work? 
And then the rest of that just gives us the IPs, the top five IPs. And then we have the same thing down here with the same regex that's going to give us the top five URIs. Okay?